Hey, middle schoolers, this is Pastor James here in the student ministry auditorium uh, at the well. And uh, of course, we're missing you like crazy, uh, but we wanted to have some opportunity to be able to, to talk with you. Um, you know, hopefully you're, you're staying uh, encouraged and having some, some time with friends and things like that. Um, you also want to make sure that you hit up our uh, well Instagram page. Um, you can also uh, hit me up uh, if you're bored. You want to talk? It's at PJ Stargell, and uh, you know I'd love to to hear from you. I'd love to you know see funny stuff that you're doing or whatever at home. Uh, but right now, what I want to do is I want to just you know go ahead and jump into a time of studying God's Word uh, for us uh, for this weekend. Since we're not here, I figured we could do it together. Uh, but you can always let me know uh, what your thoughts are. Um, following um, the lesson. Uh, you can also feel free to take some pictures along the way and post it, um, hitting up and tagging our um, well Instagram page. So let's start off with uh, an activity. Uh, you guys know me, I like games. And so we're gonna start with um, a game of characters. And so um, everybody in your family can go grab a piece of paper. Um, you know, actually just grab two because that way you can have a little bit uh, more fun with it. Um, and on that piece of paper, you're going to write out uh, the name of uh, one of the characters. I have some examples here for you to take a look at. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, maybe a, a, an historical figure or, um, you know, a hero or a villain. Um, you know, just thinking through stuff. I was like Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, the Hulk, Thor, uh, Mario, uh, one of the Ninja Turtles, um, Bilbo Baggins or the Joker, uh, Lex Luthor um, or Bane or Loki or Shredder, Magneto, so on and so on and so on, okay? So go ahead and take uh, just a second and do that. And uh, while you're doing that, uh, let me explain to you how this um, activity is gonna work. One at a time, you are gonna take um, a turn uh, being able to describe uh, your character. Um, so uh, once you are starting, you're gonna use one word at a time. Um, I would suggest no more than like four words tops. And uh, once you get to that fourth word, if nobody can guess it, then you share it and you just kind of put it off to the side. But if somebody can guess it, they get that slip of paper. Uh, and once all the papers and one, once all the characters have been uh, gone through, uh, then the person who has the most um, slips of paper, um, they win the activity. So you can think of maybe a fun prize for them. Uh, you know, they get the last, um, you know, ice cream sandwich or something like that in the freezer. Uh, if you've been looking for a way to determine that, there you go, there's an idea for you. All right, so um, I, did, I did this on my own. Um, I uh, decided that I was gonna write out on a piece of paper um, and so let me see if I can describe this and then when I'm done you can hit pause on the video and uh, be able to play that activity yourself. So um, my, my uh, character is uh, confident and selfish at times. He's crazy, creative, oh see I slipped up, I said he. Uh, he's creative and he's astute. So there you go, there's some, some of uh, mine. Uh, you can hit pause right now and I'll tell you what it looks like when it comes back. So go ahead and hit pause. Okay, so welcome back. And uh, now that uh, you've played that game, I wanna tell you who I picked. Um, and my character was Iron Man. Okay, so Iron Man um, is crazy astute. He's figured out all kinds of um, stuff to be able to get the technology going. He's, he's always, uh, Tony Stark is always confident, right? Uh, very creative, um, you know, just think about like that first moment you watch Iron Man and all the stuff is flying around and like bolting to his body and he's able to to fly and figure out how to all do that kind of stuff. Um, I just think that that would be, you know, a really cool um, thing to be able to do. So that was my character. Uh, hopefully you guys had fun with that activity too. So we're kicking off a three week series on uh, the concept of grace and specifically God's grace. Uh, we're going to see that just like in our activity, uh, we're, we have the ability to recognize grace in God because it has roots in his very character. Um, so let's just jump right in and see if we can't define grace and learn how it actually uh, impacts our life. So if you had to define grace in your own words, how would you define it? I'll give you a moment. You can hit pause and uh, answer that question together. Okay, so if you found it difficult to define, you know, maybe you can think of some examples. Um, you know, most people, you know, feel that they understand grace uh, to some degree, but I'm gonna start with a definition that uh, can help you better understand grace as a character of God. Um, so 
let's start with my definition and see what you think of that. All right, so grace, grace is the overwhelming goodness of God. It's his mercy, it's his kindness, and ultimately salvation that he has poured out on all mankind. So, you know, for me, you know, I'm thinking, you know, all the times when um, God has uh, given me um, an, an opportunity to be able to, to do something I never thought I would be able to do. Um, that's grace. That's something, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't get what I maybe deserved. And so in that way, um, that's also grace. So, you know, one of the things that with all of these characters, even Iron Man, it flows out of their very existence. It flows out of who they are. And uh, so we're going to take some time today to look at uh, what this looks like for uh, for God's character, God's character of grace. So go ahead and get your, your Bible or uh, your Bible app, uh, whatever it is um, you know that you need to, to get. Um, I will also have the words up on the screen for you, uh, just in case you know, you're in a situation where uh, you have to use your phone or your Bible app, um, so that way you can just keep going with the video, okay? So we're going to Psalm chapter 31. Psalm chapter 31, and as you're looking at that, um, you know, let me just give you a little bit of background of uh, the book of Psalms. Uh, Psalms uh, was, um, you know, written by a, a bunch of different uh, authors. Um, you know, David wrote um, about um, 73 um, of these, so just under half. Um, some were written by Asaph, um, some by Solomon. Moses wrote one. Um, there's about 50 other Psalms that, you know, we just don't know who wrote them. Um, but they were written in all kinds of different periods of time, and, and mostly... Um, the book of Psalms, what's great about the book of Psalms, especially right now when uh, you're kind of going through a time like what we are in our country, um, it's just a reflection of humanity's uh, journey with God. And so, you know, for, for you and for, for me, you know, it's a time, you know, that we can kind of identify with some of the things that are in God's word um, because it's just real and people are just, you know, talking the way uh, they're, they're feeling. Um, so, um, you know, the passage we're going to read is written by, by David, uh, same David from like David and Goliath, King David, uh, you know, the great grandfather to the nth power um, in the lineage of David, uh, excuse me, the lineage of Christ. So uh, Psalm chapter 31, uh, we're going to read in verse 19. Psalm 31, 19 reads this, it says, how abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all on those who take refuge in you. So I don't know about you, uh, but I always like to get some preferential treatment. Um, I had an opportunity last week uh, before all the schools shut down, before every everything happened, I had a great opportunity uh, to take my family to a special show, showing at Sight and Sound Theater in Lancaster. And um, they were just opening up their new show. It was awesome. It's got uh, Queen Esther. Uh, once everything you know blows over, I would highly recommend you go and watch it. It's amazing. Um, but they did everything. They didn't hold anything back. They rolled out the red carpet. Um, they had shrimp and they had hors d'oeuvres. I, I didn't even know how to spell hors d'oeuvres. I had to look it up for my notes, hors d'oeuvres. Um, they were so they were so good. And it was like as much as you could eat, you could have it all. And uh, at intermission, they had coffee and desserts that were so sweet. Um, and you know, the show was amazing, but, but you might ask like, what did I do to deserve that opportunity? I did nothing, absolutely nothing, zero. I couldn't buy a ticket. I couldn't earn a ticket. I was given that opportunity because of who I belong to, who um, the group of people that I belong to. Specifically, I belong to the same family as my brother who is in the show. He's in the cast. And uh, because this opportunity was only given to those who belong to the family of those who are in the show. And this passage that we're reading in Psalm 31 um, you know, God's goodness is stored up and then given out to a specific group of people. Now, who are they according to this passage? You know, it's it's those who fear God. It's those who take refuge in him. And this is kind of a way that the Old Testament uh, would show those who have faith in God despite their circumstances. Um, you know, to fear. There's, there's really two concepts that are listed here. To fear and then to take refuge, right? To fear God means to realize how big he is, his power, his majesty, how awesome he is. Uh, it's not to fear as you may think. You know, though God created the, the world with a word and could undoubtedly end our lives pretty easily. Fear here is more like reverence and respect. Um, and, you know, so it's not something where we're terrified. It's something where we're, we're in awe of who he is. 
Um, the second concept here in this verse, uh, those who do this, those who have fear for you, um, they're going to take refuge in you. Um, and so refuge is kind of like the place that you would go when you're hide or when you're scared. Um, it's a place um, that you would go to kind of console you and help you um, in a time of stress. And so we all have that time of place, uh, that place uh, that we find comforting when we're upset. But God is saying, you know what? He wants for us to go to him and find him as that place. He wants our refuge, that place that we would go and find, um, you know, uh, um, peace and comfort. He wants to be um, that refuge. So really this verse is already laid out a really good foundation of what grace is. It's how God, um, what grace is and how God uh, kind of uh, plays it out in our lives. Um, so we see, you know, the way um, that, that, you know, really he wants us to, to do it. So let's look at another passage. We're going to go to Micah chapter 7, verse 18. Micah chapter 7, verse 18. Um, while you're looking up uh, Micah, it's probably not a passage that you've looked up uh, a whole lot uh, in the Old Testament. I'm going to give you a little bit of background of what's happening in Micah uh, when it was written. So Micah was a prophet uh, who prophesied about um, the coming destruction of Jerusalem. So you have to wonder, like, you know, it's that guy who's always saying, you know, everyone's going to die. You know, Jerusalem's going to be destroyed. I'm sure he was like super popular with um, all of his friends. Um, and, you know, maybe he didn't even have friends. Let's just be honest. Um, but he was troubled in this chapter that we're going to read because God's people in devotion and God's um, the, the devotion and love for God has, you know, just kind of waned. It, it's not really there. And Micah is attempting to remind God's people of God's goodness. He's trying to remind them why they should worship um, God instead of um, God bringing destruction um, because of their disobedience. So let's read it together. Micah chapter 7, verse 18. It says this, Who is a God like you? Who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. So we really start to see like this contrast um, here in this passage about God's grace and who God is and who I am. Um, God's character is on display, right? He pardons us from sin. He's showing his love and his goodness to people. But for you and I, you know, that sin has kind of put us in a tough spot because it also shows our character. Our character being flawed and imperfect. Our character, um, you know, really being in need of punishment and correction uh, because, you know, we understand that if um, our sins needed to be pardoned, um, you know, really the real reality is uh, we faced a punishment that needed to be um, pardoned. Um, so, you know, Micah here notes that it's really, you know, confusing him, perplexing to him that God would even show mercy to begin with. Um, God had every right to be angry. God had every right um, to to judge and bring um, all kinds of destruction down on God's people. Um, but instead, God had been patient. Um, he was um, holding back judgment on them. And, and God, still being a just God, um, you know, was about to stop holding judgment back. And he was about to release that out upon the people. Because while he's a gracious God, God also requires that our sins be punished. So Micah didn't see God give the rebellious, sinful Israelites what they deserved, but Micah had to realize that God showing, uh, you know, that showing grace was as much about God's goodness and God's grace uh, and his character. Um, you know, it, it, all of that wrapped up into, you know, who God is. God's justice uh, comp was complemented by his grace. So let's look at one last passage here. Uh, this was a little bit longer. We're going back to the book of Psalms. Psalm chapter 145, verses 8 to 16. So Psalms chapter 145, verses 8 to 16. So uh, one, actually one key comment here. Um, I just want you to look and listen for uh, the way that David describes God's goodness. Um, you know, maybe how grace is shown to people throughout this passage. So um, as we're reading, you know, just kind of make note of that. Um, you know, maybe you can just, you know, say that's grace right there um, as we're reading it aloud. Okay. So Psalm 145 uh, verses eight to 16. 
The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to angry, uh, to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. He shows compassion on all his creation. All of your works will thank you, Lord, and your faithful followers will praise you. Sorry, I forgot to click. Then they will speak of the glory of your kingdom, and they will give examples of your power. They will tell about your mighty deeds and about the majesty and glory of your reign. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule through all generations. I skipped ahead that time. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule throughout all the generations. The Lord always keeps his promises. He is gracious in all he does. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts the eyes, I'm sorry, lift those bent beneath their loads. The eyes of all who look to you in hope, they, you give them food as they need it. When you open your hand, you satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. So, what did you hear? Um, pause the video if you want to talk about it. Um, but, you know, here's what I saw about God's character. Verse 9 tells us that God is good to all. He's compassionate to all those, uh, all that he has made. Men, creatures, everything. Verse 13, he's faithful and loving. Verse 14, he upholds all those who fall. Verse 15, the idea in, of provision and blessing comes from God. You know, guys, it's important to, for us to understand that God is love. God is goodness. He is grace. He is mercy. He embodies all of these beautiful expressions of grace and compassion. Because graciousness flows from him because that's who he is. Grace and the desire to pour it out on his children is wrapped up in God's identity. Um, it's really important for us to remember this because God's character is in contrast to ours. Remember, God is faithful, he's loving, he's just. I'm imperfect, and I'm in need of punishment. Romans 3.23 tells us we're all sinners and fall short of God's standard. And Romans 6.23 tells us that the wage that we earn because of our sin is death. And we deserve to pay for that sin. But because of God's goodness, because of the active nature of his grace, and his mercy, he showed grace to people. He continues to show grace to us today. It's who he is. And while we can't claim to understand God completely, we can understand that he has revealed himself to us. And he continues to do that even today. So what does that mean for you and for me today? Well, it means a couple of things. You know, we continue to see over and over again, God's character, uh, his character of goodness and grace to his people. Have you ever experienced that type of grace on your own? When we grab hold of God's grace for salvation, you know, that's when we begin to experience his goodness towards us. When we truly understand that we do nothing, kind of like me when I went to that show, I did nothing, right? I, I just was identified with my brother. Am I identified with Christ? Can I, can I say, I, I now, you know, Christ now lives in me and I don't live for myself. You know, maybe for you, you're feeling guilty. Maybe there's, uh, un, you feel almost undeserving of that grace. Um, I've had many people tell me over the over my years as um, a youth pastor and now a family ministry pastor, you know, Pastor James. You know, once I once I get to a point where, um, you know, I'm I'm better or I'm doing things uh, more moral in my life, I will come to Christ and I'll start a relationship with Him. No, that's not it at all, guys. God wants to start a relationship with us right now. He desires to be known by us and for us to submit to him. You know, it's it's pretty common um, to feel distant from God when you know we're aware of our sin. And that's exactly what that argument is based off of. The good news is that God's grace isn't dependent upon us. It's dependent on him. And scripture is clear. God chooses to show us grace because he is loving and because he's good, not because we deserve it. So let me just wrap this up for us here. You know, we've seen through our lesson today, you know, that God is good and a gracious God. He cares about you deeply and wants to, you to experience his grace daily in your life. And though he doesn't want us to abuse his grace, he does want us to accept it. He does want us to live every day as his child. 
Uh, if you ever feel unworthy to accept it, remind yourself that you are um, you that you are unworthy, and God shows it anyway because that's who He is. So live today uh, with the truth that it's not what you do to earn grace, but it's who He is that allows us to receive it. Now I have um, on our Living Water uh, CC dot com backslash students page. Uh, there's all kinds of um, information for you, um, including. Um, some discussion questions uh, for you, um, even just some thought-provoking things on what what I can do to apply, you know, this teaching. Um, but second, there's you know a little spot there for you to um, have a conversation with your parent. There's there's a great place for you to to uh, dialogue with God. I would encourage you, um, no matter what, grab another piece of paper, um, sit down, um, draw on it, sketch on it, write a letter, whatever that me that means. I have a great video, um, unspoken. Um, you know, call it grace is the video that I have linked um, in that um, in that handout for you. Um, also, I have two days of devotions uh, for you uh, if you want to understand a little bit more about this. Um, so anyway, don't forget, um, if you have questions or thoughts, um, you can hit me up, james at livingwatercc.com or at PJ Stargell on, on uh, Instagram. So um, guys, looking forward to uh, being with you guys uh, very soon again. Um, if also one one last um, plug for us, um, our youth nights on Wednesday nights uh, for middle schoolers uh, are all on Zoom uh, video chat. Um, if you want to be added to that and you haven't been coming on Wednesday nights, but now you have you know nothing else you know to do, um, and you want to check that out, we would love to talk to you about it. You can um, get the download for the study. Uh, go ahead and do that study ahead of time, but make sure that you link me uh, or um, send me an email or hit me up at, at PJ Stargell um, so that I can send you um, the room ID number on Zoom and you can jump in with your age and grade, uh, your uh, grade and gender uh, for small groups. All right, guys, I'll see you soon.